So I conducted a mixed method study on education for social cohesion from a gender perspective in conflict affected Sri Lanka. And the purpose was to explore the relationship between gender equality and peace uh, for my doctoral dissertation. And Sri Lanka has had a 30 year civil war, which ended in 2009, but it still remains in a state of conflict over ethnic, religious, linguistic differences. And usually states with greater levels of gender equality are more democratic, more stable, and more prosperous. So democracy, democracy certainly stands on the shoulders of gender equality. So my study examined if and how policies for social cohesion and peace through education, and specifically citizenship education, contribute to peace in conflict-affected Sri Lanka. So through a document analysis of the grade six to nine citizenship textbooks, interviews and surveys with teachers and students, and classrooms and school observations uh, in 13 schools across four provinces, I looked at how policies related to education for social cohesion are appropriated and enacted within schools and classrooms, and how students consequently understand their roles as citizens in a country experiencing a protracted conflict. So the results of my research provide empirical events that societies experiencing major conflict often have longstanding patterns of gender inequity and discrimination. And also that the knowledge and skills of work across gender differences also contribute to working across other types of differences, such as ethnic or religious differences. And so the qualitative and quantitative findings show that there is a positive relationship between participants' perspectives on gender equality and social cohesion and other forms of um, you know, working across difference or seeing other people's perspectives. Further, patriarchal values transmitted through school practices and the curriculum undermine democracy and contribute to harmful masculinities, leading to violence in schools and the community. And this relationship is even is further magnified by community level violence, including war and military occupation, particularly in the northern parts of the country. So education's capacity to promote social cohesion in Sri Lanka is largely limited to a, due to a state centric sort of belligerent approach to notions of citizenship and citizenship education, uh, which is primarily focused on developing a personally responsible citizen rather than a social justice oriented one. And not surprisingly, these findings are in line with sort of the broader sociopolitical reality of Sri Lanka, which is in increasingly a tendency towards authoritarianism. My personal and professional identity very much informed the development of this research um, and even pursuing a doctoral dissertation as well. So I have been, and I still am an elementary school teacher in Canada for the last 14 years. So issues of race, equity, and ability are present daily throughout my practice and led me to question sort of education's role in addressing social inequity within the Canadian context. So after teaching an integrated curriculum on reconciliation in my grade six class in inner city school, I was sort of pushed closer to this research topic. And the cross-curricular approach included teaching math, language, and social studies through a social justice lens by focusing on Canada's relationship with Indigenous communities and the impacts of residential schools. So during the class discussions and on and the impact of injustice and trauma with my classroom students over the, the year that we taught this curriculum, it really inspired me to consider the importance of bringing conflict. Um, and conflict doesn't always have to be bad, but conflict, discussing conflict and controversy um, and controversial issues in the classroom to facilitate reconciliation through knowledge and empathy. It also showed me that, you know, peace is only possible by recognizing injustice and having these difficult conversations about the privileges that we enjoy, um, sometimes as a majority community in a society. So the Sri Lankan context was an obvious choice for me, given my personal connection to the country. As an ethnic minority in Tamil, I was born and raised in Sri Lanka, and I came to Canada as a child due to the war. Uh, so war and conflict were very impressionable experiences in my early uh, in my early life. So it was not surprising that I found myself in graduate school studying the impact of conflict on children. So the process of conducting this research taught me about the important role that educators and schools have in fostering resilience and hope in the face of sort of insurmountable challenges resulting from war. 
um, particularly among students, teachers that I met among the ethnic minority participants living in the conflict affected regions in the northern parts of the country. It also brought to light the limitations of education that need to be acknowledged and addressed by other systems and institutions in society and within peace education research overall. Um, personally, returning to Sri Lanka as a Canadian, but also as an ethnic minority Sri Lankan woman taught me a great deal about the complexities of navigating my insider outsider identity while conducting research as well as the importance of adapting my research and processes to ensure that I was upholding ethical responsibilities of doing no harm um, while working with vulnerable participants in a conflict affected and politically unstable context. So I often found myself in conversations that were very sensitive and had to make sort of quick decisions about whether it was appropriate, meaningful and beneficial for my participant for me to include this content in the research um, and to ensure that there was no harm done in terms of any kind of political persecution. My research found that despite the many challenges to building peace through education and which there are many challenges and limitations, um, there was a great deal of resiliency and agency. So teachers in schools can make small incremental changes towards peace. So when educators were able to engage in practices that fostered knowledge and skills to empathize across differences, whether it was gender, ethnic, or religious, um, and you know these were simple things in the classroom that teachers did to build trust with their students, um, and they built egalitarian relationships. They fostered inclusive democratic citizenship among students, and which I think contributed overall to social cohesion within the classroom and within the school. And I suppose will also you know sort of translate it to society overall. So the schooling has the potential to transform values and perspectives associated with gender equality that contribute to authoritarian and violence. So, you know, having more egalitarian equitable relationships resulted in students being more gender equitable and also more democratic and more peaceful within the school. So there was a very strong relationship between values of gender equality and values of peace and social cohesion and other aspects like linguistic and ethnic or religious differences. Uh, but most importantly, teaching gender equality can also be a really important entry point to promote the foundational skills for peace and social cohesion. <laughs>